All away from politics, Nigeria's electricity sector is entered a new era with states now allowed to establish and regulate the electricity market. This shift follows a constitutional amendment and the enactment of the Electricity Act of 2023 signed by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, has granted regulatory approvals to six states, Elugu, Ikiti, Ondo, Imo, Oyo and Edo states, marking a significant step in decentralizing power supply. These changes allow states to manage electricity generation, transmission and distribution, aiming to improve energy access and stimulate economic growth. States must notify NEC and transfer regulatory authority within six months, highlighting their readiness to control their electricity markets. Well, to discuss this, uh, we are joined uh, by Stanley Negbenebo, a legal practitioner. Thank you for being here with me, Stanley, this morning. How will the states ensure... Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Now, how will the states uh, indeed ensure uh, a smooth transition to the electricity markets, uh, given the existing infrastructure and regulatory framework? And most importantly, uh, what challenges might they face in terms of coordination and harmonization with the national grid? Uh, first off, uh, we need to first say that the, the journey that we have gone through as a nation in respect of our electric power challenge has been more of a regulatory framework issue. Incidentally, the recent regulatory amendments by way of first the constitutional amendment and eventually the enactment of the Electricity Act has created the right platform for things to be put in proper perspective. In terms of challenges, well, first off, the first challenge, which is the regulatory framework has been catered for. Going back in time, if you recollect, there was an attempt by the Lagos state government to resolve the electricity challenges in Lagos at that time, the Enron project that was botched. But incidentally, because of political rigmarole, that didn't come to light. But now that obstacle has been taken out it's left for the state to have the political will to take responsibility to solve the energy crisis that has pervaded our entire space. Now, what does any state need to do? Like the six states that you mentioned earlier have already done, they've taken the legislative action, which is first and foremost creating the legal framework within their states to set up a regulatory agency for electricity market in their state. From the point when every state has taken this step of passing the necessary law, they have an obligation to also notify the Nigerian Electric, Power, Electric Regulatory Commission, that's NERC, to tell them that now we have the law, our regulatory agency is in place. The next step after this is infrastructural development. Now here comes the challenge. That challenge is to get infrastructure, you need a lot of funding. So maybe if you ask me, that challenge of Funding may be the biggest obstacle, but can that challenge be, be, be solved? Yes, it can. Be the state of the law right now, I'm sure private investors are waiting to latch upon the opportunities that exist in the Nigerian market. Perhaps I may state that Nigeria has one of the biggest markets in the world over, and we are actually supposed to be beautiful, bright for investment. What has actually hampered the situation has actually been the legal and regulatory framework over the period of time. So if you ask me, the coast is clear right now. We just need to get our acts right. All right. Anyway, uh, you've talked about investments and Nigeria needing to get its act right. But let's talk about um, decentralization of uh, power supply and its uh, effect, especially on electricity tariffs and not forgetting to uh, consumer affordability. Uh, currently, we do have Nigerians who are already complaining about the cost of power and uh, how they're not able to meet up, especially in some quarters. Uh, now that we're looking at the decentralization, how do you think this would affect, especially consumption users, uh, being able to uh, afford it? Uh, well, in terms of aff aff affordability, I would say first things first. Right pricing is important. The cost of production must ultimately reflect on the end user cost. If you ask me, the average Nigeria spends a lot on seeking alternative energy right now by way of running their private generators and all of that. If we have an effective system that is functional, I'm sure that they can be right priced, and that's where the regulators come into play. The demand is there, the investments are needed, but Nigerians need to also understand that 
if a private investor is coming to intervene, is intervening because he's also hoping to get return on his investment. As to whether or not there can be progress on this regard, I can tell you for a fact that the biggest challenge we've had has been the national grid, which is more than 40 years old and continues to collapse every other day, of course, because of the old technology that it's still operating on. People need to just understand that electricity price everywhere in the world is not cheap. What we should be focused on should be efficiency. And if we want efficiency, we must want the right price. And the right price will be subject to the cost of production. For instance, access to gas, for instance, states closer to gas plants shouldn't actually spend as much as people who need to actually pipe gas to a distance before they can get to the generating companies. All that would actually reflect on the, if the cost effect on the long run. I've always said to people that decentralizing power supply in Nigeria is the best, but the North doesn't even have a business using gas to power. If you use the solar generating system up North, you will get as much power as you require that would serve the entirety of the North. Those in the middle belt can latch upon the hydropower, and you will see that the cost-benefit analysis of actually using local content to solve each state's electricity needs will go a long way in bringing down the cost at the end of the day. All right. Anyway. Um, I, I think I think we've gotten your point. I want to say thank you so much for talking to us, uh, legal practitioner Stanley Negbenebo. Thanks for your time. You're welcome, sir.